got a quarter two, week eight, right in inequality that represents the graph below. The arrow is pointing to the left, so I have x is less than, and it's an open circle, so it's not going to be equal to, but the number is one. When you're writing inequalities, or um, even if it's just asking you to write an equation, order does matter, and this, this is one that uh, tricks people a lot. Write an inequality that represents 10 less than. That's the important part. Less than 4 times the number. So 10 needs to be less than this. So 4 times the number actually has to be written first. So I have to do 4 times the number, and then 10 less than that. And it needs to be more than 1,000, so it has to be greater than 1,000. And it cannot be equal to because says it needs to be more than. So if you had 10 first, you, it would not be correct. Yeah, I had a rerun. Uh -huh. Steve increases his math average by nine points over a period of 15 weeks. How many points per week did he average? So it's nine points per 15 weeks. We're finding the uh, unit rate, so all you would do is Nine divided by 15, I'm going to put that in my calculator, 0 0.6, and then I want to label points per week. Tim walked 16 laps in 40 minutes, while Jim walked 30 laps in an hour and 15 minutes. Who is the fast, faster walker? Okay. So I'm going to do that on the paper, except for after I looked at this one, you might get a little confused when I do that. Cool. So I'm going to start and I'm going to explain it. I have 16 laps in 40 minutes. Well, let's just start by reducing. This is, who is this? What's his name? Tim. This is Tim. So let's reduce this by four. Okay. We can reduce by four. So that would be 4 tenths, but then I need to reduce it again by 2, two and then I get 2 fifths. Two fifths. Then let's worry about Jim. He was 30 laps in uh, 1 hour, 15 minutes. Can I leave it in hours and minutes? No. Okay, so I have to change my hours to 60 minutes plus my 15. So now that's really 30 in 75. And I'm going to reduce by 15. Let's start big. If I did 5, that's fine. But 15 would be 2 fifths. So do the fractions equal each other? Yes. yes. So then does somebody walk faster? No. Nope. nope, they're equal. And that's when we talked about what uh, our worksheet was yesterday. They, that means they are proportional. I could have also done it in my calculator, 16 divided by 40 and 30 divided by 75 and gotten a decimal point. What is it? 0 0.4. 0 0.4, and then you're comparing the decimals. Since you're using a calculator now, I might, I might have done it that way. This is probably one that you are struggling with, which is okay. Yeah. Emily estimated that there's 315 students at a soccer game. The actual number of students at the game was 350. What is the percent error? Okay. She guessed 315, but this is the actual. This is her guess or estimate. So you have to figure out the difference between the actual amount and the difference, because this is how far off she was. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Then you take the actual amount divided by what she was off and I get 10%. You got it?
divided by 350, you get 0 0.9, which would be 90%. So, so she got 90%. So what, what she was off was what's left of 100 minus 90 is 10. So that would work. Oh, that's all I see. Uh, 100 minus 90, yeah. These are a little bit more difficult. We're going to come up into a lesson, in, into a chapter. We're just trying to introduce a little bit now. I was thinking of these. Number six, I always go through and I find my darkest lines and I put my line over my darkest line because this is my Y, so that's zero. This is my X, and that's my zero. Then I find my points. I don't go anywhere on the X, so that's zero but I go up one, so it's zero comma one. My next number, I go over one, two, three, four, so it's positive four, and I go down one, two, three, four, so it's a negative four. This would be point one, this would be point two. So then on my paper, I should, which I didn't do, I need to then show that it's the uh, formula, y, two, one, Y, yeah, thanks. Y2 minus Y1, y one over X2, X2 minus, minus X1. X1. That's the first thing I wrote. Yep, yeah, that's thanks. the first thing you should, whenever you see slope, you need to be writing it down. So then I go, these are my points number one, these are points number two, so I put it in. Y2 is a negative four, minus Y1 is one. X2 is four, minus X1 is zero. So then I come through and I go, keep, change, change, so negative four plus negative one is a negative five. Keep, change, change, and I can subtract zero and I still get four. So if I have a negative five over four, this is my y over my x. So a negative five means it goes down five, and a positive four means it goes right four. Don't forget to write that part. I have to do two. <gasps> I don't know what I'm looking at, but I could not see what was on the dark thing at all. Uh, well, those lines are a little bit yeah. blurry. Yeah. So I just kind of look at my spaces. Yeah, like, okay, that's one space, two, three, yeah. four. Uh, the next two problems are what we're talking about in our chapter, which are like rates, and then we'll get into some scale drawing. Scale drawing is just having a rate, just having something that's proportional to each other. Two fields at a, at a state park are 100, or excuse me, 1,000 meters from each other. On a map, the two fields are eight centimeters apart. What scale is the map using? When you go to scale, and I'm covering this up because I didn't really show it to you that way correctly, exactly. Scale should always be on top. So the scale or whatever your map is. So it should always go scale over actual. Write that down. Scale over actual. So the scale is eight centimeters. The actual is 1,000 meters. Now to find the scale, we have to get the scale down to one, okay? So how do I get eight down to one? Divide by eight. Or divide by eight. So then I have to divide the bottom by eight, which is 125. And that's all you had to do. Wow. Scale on top, actual, that's it actual on the bottom, and then to get to scale, you have to always, scale is always going to be represented as a one. That's it. I did it this way. I took a thousand meters divided by eight, and I got 125. This is a better way for you to do it, to know that scale needs to be on top, because we're going to get into where we have a couple different shapes. One scale, one's not. So you can't do it like this, and that's why I covered that up. Okay, that's why I wanted you to write this down. Number eight talks about similar uh, shapes. Similar means they're the same shape, but not the same size. We need if they're so what they are considered, they're considered proportional together. If they are similar, they're proportional. 
So I'm going to take two sides from this shape. I'm going to take the 8 and the 14. And I'm going to put, and I don't want you to see this, I'm going to have 8 is one side over 14. This is shape number 1. Okay? Now I'm going to use shape number 2 here. Now, whatever the 8 was, it has to be corresponding to the other side. So 8 is the bottom down here. So where would like, what is that over here on this show? Two. It's the 2. So then the 2 has to come over here. And then I have 14 here. So that is my X. Now we solve this. You can do it a couple different ways. Remember, we just want equivalent fractions. Yeah. But let's say I just am going to do this. Cross multiplication. So I have 8x equals 14 times 2. 8x equals 28. Then I'm going to divide yeah. by 8. Divide by 8. So x equals... Well, if I do it on my calculator, 28 divided by 8, yeah. oh, 3.5. Or I could have said I have 8 14 to 2 over something. To get from 8 to 2, I had to divide by 4. So I can take 14 divided by 4. It's not even. But I could still do it that way. Yeah, that's what I didn't like. Either way is fine. Either way is fine. Pretty easy.